Welcome back to the Econotase videos. Um, in this video, what I hope to achieve is to go in a lot more detail in Econotase's mechanism. There are some important factors that we have to take care of. Um, if your teacher doesn't require you to know mechanisms, just go ahead and skip this video. This is going to be a lot more detailed than you need to know. Um, if you're interested in the organic chemistry aspects of it, then you should certainly watch it, or if your teacher actually does require you to know the mechanisms. But in this video, we're actually going to look at how Newman projections fit into the whole equation. In the last video, what we did is we looked at the mechanism of aconitate hydrotase, also referred to as aconitase. So if you're looking at this, it's probably in a playlist, and you can certainly go back and look at the mechanism of aconitase if you just found this in a YouTube search. Okay, so what I've done is I've drawn citrate, and I've drawn it in the staggered conformation. So what we found out in the last video was that aconitate hydrotase occurs in two uh, mechanistic steps. Number one, there, there is a beta elimination that occurs, and that's followed up by a hydration of an alkene. Okay, and the alkene happened to be cis aconitate. Okay, but we're not going to look at the addition reaction here. We're specifically looking at the uh, beta elimination. And the purpose of this video is really just in case you have one of those really strict teachers who's really, really picky about mechanisms. Okay, And there's one thing you need to, uh, to know about this mechanism, and it's just like all beta eliminations. The leaving group has to be anti-paraplanar to the proton that gets subtracted. Okay, so I'll give you a moment to pause the video and see if you can figure out on a con or excuse me on citrate what the leaving group is. And if you've figured out that it's this water group, you're right. So what we're going to say is we're going to say, okay, well, this hydroxyl group already got protonated by the histidine residue in the active site. Okay, recall that this hydrogen right here, this hydrogen right there came from a protonated histidine in the active site. The protonated histidine was in the resting state of the enzyme. So this water group is going to be our leaving group. Okay, And the leaving group is going to be, or the, the, the actual loss of the leaving group, is going to be initiated by a serine deprotonation. Okay, So serine is, is going to exist in the deprotonated state at rest, and it's going to deprotonate citrate. And what I've done here is I've said, okay, well, here's my I, right? And I'm looking down this bond right here that I'm going to label in orange. So this bond right here, this is the bond that I'm looking at. And so this carbon right here, this will be our front carbon, and this one will be our back carbon. Okay, so if I label the number here, the dot in the center right here, that's our front carbon, and then this circle in the background, this is our back carbon. Maybe one day we'll have a we'll have a section in these videos on Newman projections. If you need review on Newman projections, you can certainly Google videos of those or look in your organic chemistry textbook. But the whole point here is I've drawn citrate in its staggered conformation, and also the other thing is I've drawn the, I've drawn um, this leaving group right here, and notice that it has the, the, the molecule citrate has two protons on it. There's one right here which I've labeled H2, and there's one that I've labeled here as H1. And for this video, we're going to treat those protons as if they are completely different protons. Okay, Even though technically in citrate they're exactly the same, we're going to treat them as if they're different. And this, that's why I've colored them in different colors. Okay, Now just remember, the leaving group has to be anti-paraplanar to the proton that's abstracted. So this H2 right here, this is not anti-paraplanar. In the staggered conformation, the anti-paraplanar proton is the green one right here. So let me go ahead and circle this one. This is going to be the proton that's abstracted. Okay, And what is our goal of this re part of the reaction? Well, the goal of this part of the reaction is to get this molecule right here. It's to get cis aconitate. So what you should get after this reaction is this, okay? So you should get these two carboxyl groups, which I'm going to circle, you should get these carboxyl groups cis to each other, right? That's why it's called cis, cis aconitate, right? They should be cis to each other when you get through with this part of the reaction. In fact, if you wanted to label this uh, bond in its absolute configuration, you would call it Z. You have your EZ configuration. This is a Z double bond. Okay, So it's cis aconitate because the carboxyl groups are cis to each other. Okay, So we should end up with this thing at the end of this part of the mechanism. Okay, 
So let's do that. Let's deprotonate this, deprotonate this proton from the carbon in the center right here. And then let's cause the loss of this water leaving group. And so what you do in eliminations, and if you need review, certainly go back and look at your elimination uh, mechanisms. But the thing is, Newman projections are really helpful. And the, the reason they're helpful is you basically take the molecule of question into the staggered conformation and you draw it in the Newman projection. Okay, so this carboxyl, just so you know, this carboxyl is, um, excuse me, uh, not that one, is this one up here at the top, okay? That's the carboxyl that I pointed to in the actual molecule right here. And so what you do when you do the, the loss of the leaving group is you basically take, okay, here's my leaving group, here's my proton, and what you're going to do is you're going to take a dotted line and move it directly through, move it directly through the leaving group and through the proton that it's anti-paraplanar to. Then you look at the Newman projection, you say, okay, well, these two carboxyl groups, this one right here and this one, those are on the same side of that dotted line. So they're going to be on the same side of the double bond. So why don't we do this? Let's make this, the carboxyl group that was in white, let's make that this one. And then let's make the one in red on this one. Okay. So in other words, what we've done is we've basically said that this carbon is going to be our front one, right? And this one is going to be our back one. And likewise, you can make the same argument with, um, with the other things on the other side of the dotted line. They're going to be on the same side of the double bond. So your hydrogen 2 is going to be right here. And then on top of that, you have this carboxyl group right there. Okay. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Okay. And we can certainly count our carbons to make sure we still have six because citrate had six carbons. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we still have six carbons. So we did it right. And notice, whenever we do this technique, we get that the two carboxyl groups that we, that we mentioned earlier are on the same side of the double bond. Okay, and this is really the technique you want to use when you're doing beta eliminations to make sure you get the right product. You find the leaving group, whatever it happens to be, you find the proton that's going to be abstracted, and then assuming they're anti-paraplanar to each other, and that means that they're on opposite sides of the circle, opposite sides of the Newman projection, you basically take a dotted line and just go right through the center of both of them, and then on either side of that dotted line, that's going to be what's on that side of the double bond. And basically, the dotted line represents your double bond. Okay? And so let's actually do something. Let's do something a little bit different. Um, let me come over here. Let's say, for instance, that let's do, draw another new projection. But let's do something different, something that would be incorrect. Okay, so let's say. Um, Let's keep all this stuff the same. So we have our carboxyl group here. I'm going to stop using the colors just for the sake of time. So let's say here's H2, here's H1. But instead of having the back carbon like we did, let's rotate it 120 degrees, right? So let's basically take this water group and move it over here. Let's take this carboxyl group, move it down here, and this um, methylene carboxyl group and move it back up here, okay? In other words, my water group is going to be up here, right? It's going to be up there, okay? Then this um, particular carboxyl group is going to be up here, and then this one is going to be down here, right? So let's find our leaving group, right? Let's find our leaving group, and we notice our leaving group is right here, right? That's our leaving group. And then we find the proton that's anti-paraplanar to it. It's the one that's on the opposite side of the double, or opposite side of the Newman projection, right? That's this one. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take our dotted line, right? And we're going to run it right through the dead center of those, right? Right through the center, okay? And that dotted line is going to represent our double bond, right? So that's our double bond, right? And then we say that everything that's on one side of the dotted line is on one side of the double bond. So that means that, let's do this. So this carboxyl group, this one, that's this one right here, that's going to be this, right? And then the other one is going to be this one, right? And actually, let's go ahead and label it. 
this was our front carbon, right? And this circle in the back was our back one. So that means this is our front carbon and this is our back one, right? And then what happened? Well, on the other side of the double bond, on the front carbon, we had hydrogen one. So hydrogen one is going to be right here, right? And then on the back carbon was our carboxyl group, right? Now notice what happens when we abstract the proton that is that we labeled as H2 instead of H1. Notice what happens. Those two carboxyl groups, they end up being what? They end up being trans to each other, right? They end up being trans. And if you were to label the absolute configuration of this double bond, it wouldn't be Z, it would be E, okay? This is not what happens, okay? That's not what happens, okay? So the reason we do this video is just so that um, you get accustomed to really drawing the mechanism correctly. Okay, so notice when we go back and look at citrate, right? Let me do this in, uh, I'll do this in gray, okay? This right here, this was our leaving group, right? Or it eventually will be once it gets protonated by histidine, right? So that will be our water group that leaves. But notice, you have to use the proton, you have to abstract the proton that's anti-paraplanar to it. That just happens to be the hydrogen on the on the wedge right and actually if you draw the molecule in its staggered conformation it will always turn out that if your leaving group is on a dash your proton is on a wedge if your leaving group is on a wedge your protons on a dash if another and also if your leaving group is in the plane of the board or in the plane of your screen then so too is the proton Okay? And that's always true when you're dealing with staggered conformations, and that's the way I've drawn it. It's sort of in this zigzag, this zigzag shape. If you draw it like that, then all these things hold true. Okay? So I just wanted to make that perfectly clear. Um, this isn't too important, especially if your teacher doesn't require you to draw mechanisms, but it is important if your teacher does to be absolutely correct. Your leaving group always has to be anti-paraplanar to the proton that's abstracted in a beta elimination. So I hope this video really cleared up anything on aconitase's mechanism. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how aconitase has other functions inside the cell. See you soon.